If I think I'm gonna eat something that has dairy, I'm gonna take keep lactate. Why we do that? Cause I like ice cream sometimes, and I want to eat some cheese. If I want to eat some cheese, but why do you? But why you have to keep the lactate? Cause what, what happens? My, my stomach, it don't agree with my stomach. I wonder why. <laughs> but it agree with me, Tabas. I tell my stomach, shut up. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice? Got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice? Got to roll the dice. That's why. All my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. And the lady that's stopping by for conversation on the drink today is an Emmy-nominated NAACP Award, Image Award winner, New York Times best-selling author, globally known and beloved social media personality, one of TikTok's top creator, a vegan icon, plant-based activist, PETA 2020 Person of the Year, a mogul, entrepreneur, C CEO, an actress, producer, writer, host, fashion designer, a wife, America's mom and auntie, Tabitha Brown. <laughs> Tab is that enough? Honey, listen, did, I was like, who did all that? Did I, did I need anything else? No, honey. You, How are you doing this day? I'm doing amazing. How are you? Ah, man, I am doing, this is an unbelievable honor for me. When doing my, my, my research on you, I'm like, wow, I'm just not hearing about you, but you've been at this thing for a minute. Oh, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. I think in the second phase of my life, which has been the last six years right. when most people found me. Right. Um, is what, how most people know me, but I've been pursuing like my dreams and entertainment for over 20 plus years. So when people refer to you as America's mom or everybody's favorite auntie, how does that make you feel? Do you, are you like, don't be calling me no auntie, I ain't. Oh no, honey, I love it. Yes, yes. it's a term of endearment. It is a term of endearment. And also like for the term America's mom, I had that on my vision board for years and nobody knew that. Really? But I wanted it because I wanted to be like Claire Huxtable. Okay, so okay. When I was growing up, I looked at her like, oh, she's America's mom. So I wanted to be that and I thought I'd have a show as an actress right. and get that uh, title, but people call me that just for being me, so. So when you were growing up, you're from a small town in North Carolina. Yes, Reeds Eden. Eden. Yeah. I My stylist is from Reedsville. Shut up. Hollywood. Yeah. Hollywood is from Reedsville. Say it ain't so. Come on with the 336. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so, we got to know each other yeah, then. I so, know these people. So when you're growing up, so what did what did little Tabitha want to be when she was growing up? Oh, I wanted to be an actress. You wanted to be an actress. It started very early, about five or six, watching the Cosby show. Okay. And I remember telling Mama, I said, Mama, I want to be Rudy's friend that ring the doorbell next. Okay. <laughs> Peter would come in, and he never had nothing to say. Right. I didn't like that. Right. I had something I wanted to say. Right. And so she said, oh, you want to be friends with Rudy? I said, but only in the TV. Right. I didn't know what that meant. Right. And she said, oh, that means you want to be an actress. Mm -hmm. And so I spent all my childhood trying to figure out how do I become this thing mm -hmm. called an actress. Right. And so I, my whole life, that's always been what I wanted. Even from a small town in North Carolina, you dreamt, you dreamt big of somewhere being far, far away from North Carolina. Never forgetting your roots, but uh -huh. you wanted to be Hollywood. I, I just wanted to be on TV, right? I was always the one performing at the cookouts, mm -hmm. Sunday dinners, all that. You know, my daddy would buy me uh, joke books. Okay. So I would study them all week. And so I'd be like, ooh, this weekend at the cookout right. or at the Sunday dinner, I'm about to perform these jokes, right. you know? It's just always been a thing I love. Did you... Did you being from North Carolina, obviously, I have a. I'm from rural South Georgia. I talk with a heavy colloquial dialect. You're from North, rural North Carolina, and so you talk with that dialect also. Mm -hmm. Did you take classes to try to remove that, or oh, you just yeah. settled on who you are? I covered it for years, <laughs> <laughs> for, for years. Like, okay, from corporate America uh, being told that you got to cover it, right, and then in entertainment being told, you know, I sound country, I sound ignorant, right. I believe that. And so I took acting classes and, you know, learned how to cover it. But I also learned how to code switch very early as a little girl. Right. Watching my mama talk to bill collectors and right. change her voice. I'm like, oh, that's how we got to talk to people, right. you know. Talk uh, to family friends one way, talk to... Exactly. And I did that. <laughs> right. But I did it for so long, you know, I, I kind of lost myself for a little bit. Right. But now, honey, these last six years has been my freedom walk. Right. And I never covered anymore. What did people say? Because a lot of times they say, "Oh, you trying to act." You know what they would say. Oh yes. And so, so how how did how did they receive when you code switch? Well, it was a normal thing. Okay. Right. A lot of people met me and didn't know no different. Right. Because okay. that's how they met me. Right. 
right? So now when, you know, some people I met years ago, they they see me now, they're like, you didn't used to talk that way. I was like, yeah, because I want free. Right. But now if you had ever came to my house and you was with me and my husband and my daddy and all my, you know, family, right. you would have always heard this. Right. If I was comfortable enough with you. Right. But, yeah. So why was it so important to get back to Tabitha's original self and not let corporate America change because if you change your voice, you're changing who you are because a part of who Tabitha Brown is is that North Carolina. Right. You know what? It was just about freedom. Like, I had lost freedom. You know, when you start to conform mm -hmm. to make other people feel comfortable right. and, and you code switch and you're trying to fit in, it's right. not freedom. Right. Right. And so when I got sick, my prayer was to God was, if you heal me, you can have me. Right. And what I meant in that was, I'm not going to try to be this Tabitha I created no more. I'm going to be who you created me to be. And if that you meant, heal me, you can have me. And that meant I had to I be. I like that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and I, I've been letting him have me right. for the last six years, every day. You have a lot of sayings. I mean, you're my, you know, I, people hear me on, and I talk about what my grandmother and my grandfather would say, like, hello there, like so, like that, because it's my business. Have a good day. And even if you can't, don't go messing up somebody else's day. That's my dad and my daddy's <laughs> So that's how I live my life. Have you always, because I've never, I shouldn't say never, but for the most part, when I watch you interview and, and see you, you're always smiling. You're always so happy. Uh -huh. Have you always been this person? I have always been a joyful person. That's right. what my husband always says. He's like, that's just, it's always been the root of who I am. Right. I choose joy. It's a it's a intentional choice every day. Right. It doesn't mean I haven't had bad days or bad times. Right. But I've also had a long bout of uh, of a dark season. Uh huh. And I know what that looks like, and it ain't no fun. Right. And so I'm intentional with my joy and with my happiness, and right. I want to spread that. Right. Yeah. So it's so it's very important for you to be positive, even though you're going through things. Even though see people see you and they see you smiling like, oh hey, how yeah, they great. think you don't go through nothing. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. But it seems to me that you're very appreciative because you know where you came from, you see where you are and where you're heading, that you're very, very, very appreciative. My grandmother used to say, and when we didn't have anything, she said, boy, don't be ungrateful to God. Ooh, yes. She said, you got you woke up this morning, didn't you? That's right. So everything else is a blessing after that. That's right. That's the gift. Wow. That's the gift. So now that your struggles, you you I re, you tell talk about how your struggles, and because everybody see the last six years of Tabitha, but there was a period in which we didn't see this Tabitha. Right. What were those times like? Um, those times were, you know, I was living, right? So I was pursuing acting, but I was a wife and a mother. I have been for, you know, almost 22 years now, um, a mom, and been with my husband for 25 years. So we were working and trying to build and struggling, mm -hmm. and... Uh, from North Carolina to California, back to North Carolina to California mm -hmm. again, but always pursuing the dream. My only dream back then was acting, mm -hmm. right? I couldn't see past that. Right. I had put myself in a little box. And so uh, that's what it was. But I always had a job. Right. I used to work at Macy's. Uh, I used to work at UPS at a call center in North Carolina. What type of employee was Tabitha? Oh, I, now listen. Ah! <laughs> Tab was always a good employee. Okay. I can go get a job right now, okay? Right. Right now I can go get a job. I ain't never been like a I can see worker. why you worked in the call center. Yeah. You see, hey, how you doing today? <laughs> exactly. Just... But that's where I learned to cover it. Right. You know? Yep. I asked you about, we see the last six years of Tabitha, and we talk about, obviously, you talked about the time that you were going through, and you said something, you said you were living. But is there there's a difference between living, surviving, and thriving. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... You wanted to live to survive in order for you to thrive. That is correct. I like it. <laughs> very good. Yes. <laughs> I, guess we're, I guess we. I guess we. I guess we're the king and queen, queen of slogans. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, uh, yeah. so when when times got hard and you you met, I remember growing up when people left and you know used to go to New York and they go to Chicago, they go to Detroit mm -hmm. and came back home. They're like, oh, you don't bomb that. You got high on the hog and you had to come home. Right, right, right. It yeah. was like you were a failure. Mm -hmm. So how did it make you feel? You left North Carolina, you go to uh, uh, California, yeah. and you have to go back. You know, in the beginning, I was against it, mm -hmm. right? I had moved to California, thought I was moving to Hollywood, but I was down in Orange County somewhere. Okay. Right around the room. <laughs> my husband was my boyfriend at the time, and he came out. I had been out there for like three months. I didn't tell nobody how bad it really was. Right. You know, I'm renting this room. This woman is pretty much taking all my money. I'm working two jobs. I'm 19 years old. And so when my husband came out there, he was like, man, you ain't doing no acting. You ain't, we're not even in L.A. Right. 
like you struggling to even pay bills. Mm -hmm. He was like, this don't make sense. And it's expensive. Right. He was like, we need to go back to North Carolina where it's cheaper, save up money for one year. Then we can move back to L.A. where you can really pursue your dreams. Right. And so I was like, man, I ain't really want to do that. Right. But it sounded like a good idea. So I was like, all right. So we moved back, but we saved up a little bit of money so that we can move in and have our own apartment right. there. And uh, we moved to Greensboro. Okay. Moved into the city. Okay, okay, okay. okay. And so uh, and we were there. The one-year plan, though, turned into five years. And... A forgotten dream because you know we ended up having a baby and we were both working and we got a house and we had cars new responsibilities and i just thought i missed out on that opportunity i convinced myself i couldn't have it no more right so yeah you so you weren't embarrassed to go back you didn't and then when you had a child and you see you say okay we and your husband talked you into going back and you say we got one year mm -hmm. it turns into five years and did you like damn at your lowest how bad was it you know what even then i don't think it was my lowest okay Right. I think that I had just convinced myself that this is what it is. OK. And so it wasn't until I mean, I was working at a call center. I had promoted to supervise at a very. OK. Yeah. <laughs> OK. I was like 21 and I had people under me that was in their 50s. So I was wow. Like, OK. I OK. Working, OK. Right? Yes. And I was probably making, I think, $30,000 a year. I was balling. Yeah. Okay? We was doing very well. That's good money in Greenboro it, it back then. Money back then. Right. And so I was like, this is our routine. Like, right. this is going to be it. And one morning, I woke up. It felt like an earthquake had hit Greensboro. My bed shook, and I heard a voice that sounded like thunder. And the voice said, this is not the life I planned for you. And I got on my knees because I got very scared. Mm -hmm. And I just started praying. I was like, God, if this is you speaking to me, I need you to show me a sign today. Because if not, I think I'm going crazy. I'm going to go check myself in. And I told my husband what happened, and I think he thought I was crazy. Mm -hmm. But then later that day, we was on our way to the mall, and on the radio... Uh, Buster Brown, who was the local DJ at mm -hmm. the time, he came on the radio and he was like, this is Buster Brown. I got a new TV show on the WB Network and I'm holding auditions looking for a female co-host. And I could have bust the windows out the car. I went crazy in the car. I was like, that's my sign. That's 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 my audition. I got to wow. go. And I went and I, I booked that job. Wow. And that's what got me back into dreaming again. Got you in the TV. You're like, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. But did you, did you lose aspirations of being an actress or you says, okay, TV is my end point to maybe to something bigger. No, I just, that was my my sign to get back into it, Intake, however. Okay. Um, I started doing that. I was producing my own segments and interviewing people, right? right? Kind of like you. So. <laughs> okay. <And> so, <laughs> well, I, I'm in Hollywood. Okay, okay. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's a sign. All right. And so then I uh, I started back doing theater okay. in the community. And then I would drive three hours to Wilmington to do extra work on wow. One Tree Hill. Okay. Because I was like, I needed to know what it's like to be on a set. Right. So that I can see, like, how everything works. Works. Mm -hmm. And then I did all that for, like, a year. And then I told my husband, now it's time to move back to L.A. Mm -hmm. Yep. I read where your your um, your mom had passed, mm -hmm. and it was a very dark time for you. Seemingly, you went through some depression. So, what was that time? So, how did you deal with what you was going through? Because I'm assuming you're very close to your mom. Yeah. And then to the shift, you're like, okay, I know my mom would want me to do what? Yeah. So when when my mama was sick, it was uh, it was a tough time. You know, because me and my husband, we were still very much so newly married. Right. You know, we've been together for years. Right. But we were new in Los Angeles. Right. So I was going back and forth to North Carolina to help take care of her. Okay. So just that time and to know that it was a terminal disease. Right. My mama died young. She was 51. Wow. And so those three years were hard in itself. Right. But I feel like it, it was the time that changed me the most. Uh but in the best way, mm -hmm. you know, when you see somebody who is amazing. Right. My mama was a light and she was a master at giving grace and she loved people and she never complained. So I saw my mama go from being this amazing woman. She was a social worker. She was a pastor who wore heels every day mm -hmm. and was, you know, out all the time to the point where she was trapped inside her body and could not move because she had ALS. Oh, man. And never one time did she complain. And I remember talking to her, and I remember asking her, you know, Mama, if you could go back and change and not be sick, would you change it? And she said no. And I said, you wouldn't go back and change not getting sick? She said, no, that means God has trusted me with this journey. He knows I can handle it. And that stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Right, it stuck with me. And then just to see her go through it so gracefully and always have a smile on her face, I always took that and was like, 
I got to do something with my life, right. you know? So when she passed away, I was like, okay, I'm going to take any job I can to, you know, in acting. And I did a lot for like two years, stuff that nobody need to really see. <laughs> 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 I was like, I booked it. Okay, I'm going to do this movie. That's when, you know, the uh, straight to DVD. Was, yeah, yeah, was straight, yeah, 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 yeah. Blockbuster right. and all that. Yeah. I had like five movies in like one year. All went to like DVDs and, and but it was, you know, but I mean, it was great. I mean, of course, I joke about it. But I'm glad for every role I took back then. Right. Because it just validated that I was living in a dream that right. I had. Right. right? Uh, and also that my mama told me that this day would come. But right. back then, I thought that was the day she was talking about. When you, I hear you talk about your mom, when you ask her if she could go back and change anything, even with the debilitating disease of ALS, she said she wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. Is that what allowed you to stay so positive because you saw the journey that your mom was on and no matter what you was going through, ain't no way it's even comparable to what she's going through. Listen, it plays a large role in my everyday life. In my everyday life. Even like right now, things I'm going through, I'd be like, man, I, I hate that I'm going through this, but it's nothing compared to that. Wow. Right. Yeah. I'm reading you a UPS worker, Macy's <laughs> Warehouse, Uber, <laughs> You worked at Macy's in Central City? Yeah, I worked in the office. In the office? Yeah, at yep. Macy's, uh-huh. So you were Uber driver? I was an Uber driver, Okay. Yep. What type of Uber driver? Did you get it? What, did you get one star, two star, three star? <laughs> Listen, you know I was the, the best Uber driver. Okay. I, did, I, I did it from October of 2017 to December, uh, or, yeah, December 30th of right. 2017. And I was the best Uber driver. I know how to read a room, though. Right. I know when people don't want to talk to me. Okay, okay. Right? But I also was like, in my mind, I'm about to get discovered in my car. Okay. So everybody that I picked up. You thought up, the casting director was going to be. Listen, I thought <laughs> that I was finna pick up <laughs> the producer, the director, the casting director. Somebody that could put you on. I said, I'm going to get discovered in the car because right. they going to they gonna right. love me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them with a couple things, and then I'm going to just call you from the set. Right. That's how my mind thinks. Right. But I did not ever yeah. pick up. I think I picked up maybe one person who said they was a producer, and I was like, you ain't no, you, you ain't no producer, but you keep speaking it into existence, right? right? But I would every time somebody would get in a car, I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, you know. You so doing? you get so you pick me up. Uh-huh. You go introduce yourself, you say, Hi, I'm Tabitha. What's your name? Uh-huh. What type of music would you like to listen to? I have some water, have some wipes, have some mints in the back. I ain't have all that. God, come on, one star, one star, one star. I had a good Chrysler 300. Okay, okay. okay. It, it, it was a nice Chrysler 300. Okay. Um, now, when we had the fires, yeah. I did go to the Rite Aid and get the mask for the people. This was before COVID. Okay, wow. Because I was telling people, right. listen, it's the, the ashes was falling. Was right, yeah. I was like, I got a little mask okay. for you right here. But uh, the water and stuff, I couldn't afford all that. Now, I had been on disability for over oh. year. I was just getting back on my feet. Oh, now. the just, so what? Y'all gonna get this mask. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Like, you mentioned you're on disability. Yeah. What transpired? You you fallen? You no, I got sick. Sick. I got sick uh, in 2016. Okay. And uh, I had a headache in the back of my head, mm -hmm. and the headache was there every day for a year and seven months. And I started having chronic fatigue in my body and chronic pain throughout my body, and I just could not get well. And going to the doctor every week and every month and doing blood work and all kind of like MRIs, everything would come back normal. They couldn't figure out what's wrong with right. Me. And so um, they just told me one day, they were like, we know that it's something autoimmune making your body attack itself. Mm -hmm. We just can't figure it out. And so, of course, when somebody tell you, we know something wrong with you, but we don't know. Hey, hold on. Y'all went to all this schooling. Y'all done went to school for 10, <laughs> 15, 20 years. Y'all done went yeah. to get all these. Yeah. And y'all, and don't nobody know nothing? No, no. So that caused me to fall into the dark. Depression. So now you're depressed right. because you've got people that's very, very, very well educated yeah. and they can't diagnose or tell you what's wrong no. or how long this is going to go on. This is very true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You tried stand up. I did. God, I was doing that for a little while, honey, and was right good at it. How many jobs? How, how many, I'm trying to figure out how many jobs you had. Are you Jamaican? Listen, it's probably my roots. <laughs> Okay, okay. May maybe. <laughs> I mean, UPS, Macy's, Uber, stand up. Uh -huh. What made you decide to do stand up? Were you funny as a child? Oh, always. Comedy is natural for me. Right. Okay, but I told you my daddy used to buy me joke books. Right. We used to watch uh, stand up all the time. Okay. My daddy was a big Richard Pryor fan. Yes. Jerry Clower, like all the. Okay. Things, like we used to listen to the, the uh, records and right. just listen to comedy. Mm -hmm. And then Def Comedy Jam, when that came, right. I did it would record them all. I would play them over and over right. and over. Uh, so it was just a thing that I loved and I respect. Right. And so when I was trying to get a TV show, because I was acting and acting, right. and I was like, man, these comedians keep getting TV shows. Let me go try some stand-up. Ah. <laughs> and so that's why I did it. Right. That's why I did it.
Trying to get a show. So you were good. So did you get booed? No, never. Really? Never. So why'd you give it up? I got sick. So when I got sick. You thought about going back? I'm not really. Every blue moon, people be like, you you want to do stand up again? I think that now what I do, uh, it, it has stand up in its own way. Right. Right. But uh, I realized why I love stand-up so much. It is really to make people feel well. Right. And I do that anyway. You do. Your personality. You walk into the room. You walked into the room and you have this big smile. And you're you're like full of energy and vibrance. It's like, even if I'm down, I'm like, damn, she happy. So something must be good about to happen to me because (laughs) she just came to my side. So when I go back outside, it's going to be sunny again. Absolutely. So you didn't meet anybody in L.A. How did... This started to take off. I read that you did a, a you critique Whole Foods, a, a, a vegan. The sandwich. Sandwich. Yes. And from 50,000 views to a million views, and that was really the launching or the jumping off point for you. Yes, yeah, so I was driving Uber, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is December 30th of 2017. I had been a new vegan for a couple of months, so okay. I had just started doing videos in these couple of months to tell people, Excuse me, when I find a new vegan option or I would cook in my kitchen, right. I'm going to share it with y'all. Right. And so I had dropped somebody off by Whole Foods, and I was like, oh, I need a little breakfast. Whole right. Foods always got a vegan option. Yeah. Went in there, and I had never ha- uh, heard of vegan bacon at the time. I right. was like, oh, huh? I got a BLT, in it, but it's vegan. Let me get that. Where well, they got a plant-based and, hog at? Right. I don't know no plant-based <laughs> hog. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, that real hog. Yes, and so I got it. Ate the first half of the sandwich so quick. I was like, oh, Lord, I need to do a video to tell people I found a new vegan right. option. So sitting in my car, I did the video, posted it. I went on back to drive an Uber. I didn't think anything really of the video because right. I was already doing videos. They weren't getting like no thousands of views. They would get like a couple hundred views, right. a couple thousand over a couple weeks, you know. Right. And so when I uh, got back home and turned my notifications on, that video had like over 50,000 views. Wow. And then, then I was like, well, who watching the video? I don't, right. Like, I don't know. And then the next morning when I checked it again, it had over a hundred and some thousand. I was like, I told my husband, I think I'm going viral. Right. And he was like, what that mean? I was like, I don't know. He was like, well, you gonna make some money? I was like, I don't know. I don't know that either. But four days later, Whole Foods reached out on Facebook in my DM and was like, we saw your video, we'd love to work with you. And honey, the rest been history ever since then. Wow. So Whole Foods reached out in your DM, mm-hmm. you're mispronouncing the sandwich wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they I ended up, they ended up saying, okay. <laughs> We're going to call it what you call it. Yes. It was originally T-L-T-A for tempeh, lettuce, tomato, avocado. Right. I called it T-T-L-A. Okay. Because I was just excited and I thought I said it right, but I said it wrong. Right. And so they changed it to T-T-L-A. Did you go vegan because of what was transpiring with your body, the autoimmune deficient, the, uh, the yes. thing that you had going on? And you say, you know what? I'm eating meat. I'm putting all this processed food in my body. Let me try this. Yes. So I went vegan. My daughter came home from school one day during this time of my mm-hmm. sickness. And she was like, we saw this documentary at school today, Mom. I think you should watch it. And it was What the Health on Netflix. Right. And so we watched it together. And uh, I told my husband, I was like, hmm. And they started talking about not all diseases being hereditary, that we can eat the same thing that can cause the same disease in our family. And I thought, well, my mama died at 51 of a rare disease. There's no cause or cure. Right. And my daddy was the first man to ever turn 70 in our family. Wow. And people die young in my family. Right. And they get sick at young ages. Right. And so I thought, well, the only thing we had in common was how we ate. And I wasn't a bad eater, right? Because, right? you know, I was in Hollywood. Right. But I wasn't eating to feel well. Right. I was eating to look a certain way. Right. And that's not the way to live. Right. Right? And so I told my husband, I was like, let's do a 30-day vegan challenge. Because I had tried every drug. You told him into it, too? Yeah. For, <laughs> for 30 days. For 30, 30 days. 30 days. Okay, 30 days. We did it as a family for okay, 30, 30 days. Okay, 30 days. Okay. Because, I mean, I had taken all the drugs the doctors right. gave me. Because I was a guinea pig. You know, okay. when you don't know what's going Yeah, they test. Honey, whatever you want to offer me, I'm desperate to feel right. better. Right. Shots in my head, shots in my spine. I was doing everything. Right. So we did it for 30 days. In the first 10 days, the headache I'd had every day for a year and seven months disappeared. And so I was like, wait a minute. That's how I look. See that little thing you did with your head? That's what okay, I did. Okay, okay, okay. So I figured, I was like, you know what? I'm on to something. And then after the 30 days, I was getting energy again. My pain was leaving my body. And I was starting to feel like myself. And I was like, you know what? This is going to be my life. I'm going to go vegan. All right. Here I am, almost six years Is your years husband later. vegan also? On, on 30 days, I, he said, babe, I told him, I said, I'm, I'm going to be vegan, babe. I, I'm not going back. He said, that's so good for you, but tomorrow I'm going to need a piece of chicken. Hey, yeah, 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 I know what I'm thinking. I'm like, I feel good. I ain't got no headaches. My stomach don't hurt. And I, I got plenty of energy. Yeah, I said, you know what? That's your business, right? But he did it two years after I was vegan. Right. I was vegan for two years, and then 
he decided on his own. He watched a different uh, documentary, right. Game Changers. Right. And that's from an athlete's and a man's point of view. Right. And then he did it himself and was vegan for two years. And then he recently went back to eating fish and chicken. Yeah. Yep. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> did you know social media had the power that it had before you went viral? No. Mm -mm. I didn't think anything really of social media. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, for, for me as an actress, I was always told, you don't get on there, honey. Right, right. Nothing good. Yeah. You, yeah, they ain't going to take you serious out right. there. And I kind of believe that, kind of like I, over the years of me believing other things that the industry told me. Right. Um, but I was doing what God told me to do, right? I only got on social media because I had a dream and I saw myself on a show. Right. And I have always had the gift of dreaming and seeing. Right. And so when I woke up and I asked God to reveal that to me, because right. I was like, I'm sick, I'm not out auditioning, I'm not doing stand-up, how was I on the show? And the words that I heard was start doing videos. And I was like, oh, no, nah, Lord, I'm not right. about to do these videos. I, right. I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actress. Right. Okay? Um, but he was very adamant. God was just like, you, this is what you need to do. He said, when you were trying to get a show, you were doing stand-up, you was reaching 15, 30 people a night. He said, but if you start doing these videos, you'll reach thousands in minutes. And I was like... Lord, I ain't even got thousands of people to reach in minutes. Right. This don't make sense. Right. And then he reminded me of the, the moment in the bathroom when I had said, God, if you heal me, you can have yeah, me. Right. So which meant I had to be obedient. Right. So when I first started doing my videos, I was doing the same like jokes and stuff I would do on stage as a you know right. comedian. Uh -huh. But I would be sitting on my bed or sitting on my couch. I, it had nothing to do with food. Right. Then over that time when my daughter came home and I decided to go vegan, the moment I told my husband, I'm going vegan, the whisper in my ear was, now tell people what you're eating in your videos. And I was like, oh, Lord, I got to tell these people I'm vegan. I'm from North Carolina. Yeah, Lord, yeah. this time, I had also shaved off all my hair, so I did the big chop. Mm -hmm. I was like, Lord, if I get on here and tell people, it ain't no challenge. Like, it's my life. I'm right, going vegan. Right, right, right. This is a lifestyle now. Yeah. This is not 30-day, 60-day, 90-day challenge. No, this is... This is going to be it. I was like, they're going to be like, that girl finally lost her mind out in right. Hollywood. But I was like... I can't care about it. I got to be obedient and, and do what God has called me to do. So I had Steve Harvey on a couple of weeks ago, and he said, "Yes, the, it was amazing." <laughs> thank you. And he said, "The number one killer of dreams is family and friends." Mm. When you told your husband yeah. about this dream, about this vision you have, it seems, and I've watched a lot of your videos, that he's been so supportive <laughs> in your dream. Well, you know, I'm gonna let him tell you eventually. But oh, yeah, he coming on. He yeah, used we... to think I was crazy. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. That I would have. Yeah. I'd be like, God showed me this because I have, like, I talk about it in my first book, right? right? He, I've always had the gift of seeing whether I'm awake or asleep. I can see things that nobody else sees. Right. I can hear things nobody else hears. Because he's talking to you. He he's ain't talking, talking to me. you. Right. And so I would, and he's showing me things right. in my dreams. And my mama would always tell me that. Right. She was like, you know, God gave you the vision, not anybody else. Correct. It's up to me to make it manifest so that others will become believers, right? right? But I, you speak it so that they know it is real. Okay. And so, in the, you know, there were many times I would tell him, and he'd be like, okay, babe, all, all right. You know, he would go along because he loves me. Correct. Not necessarily because he believes. He believe it. <laughs> but now he'd be like, dang, everything that you was, dream, we, we living in the dream now. Do we so. ever come up and say, babe, you thought of something else? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because every day we judge you, the yes. judgment goes, and the way you thought about it, you thought about something today. Yes, yes. You listen. I let him tell you. Yeah. So, what uh, a social media platform? I mean, obviously, it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. What's what's your preference? I don't, I don't really have a preference, but I started on Facebook. Facebook, right? That's my original audience, right? Right, and which is a, my older audience. Yeah, because I thought Facebook was like for family reunions, class reunions. Yes. Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah. you know we went to school together. Yep. But people are all really on Facebook. They really like, on there. They really on there, and, and they are loyal. Yes. Um, and dedicated to their people. Right. right? And and my, I don't even. Your call following them is. I call them family. Right. Nobody more loyal than my family. Right. They show up for me, right? And they, they and I and I have Instagram as well. I mean, I have them all. Right. Instagram is huge for me as well. Right. Uh, but I've never cooked live anywhere else other than Facebook. Oh, so are you the social media Oprah? Um, I don't know, but people call me that. They just a lot of people be like, "You are you the new Oprah for us," and I be like, "Well, God bless it. I, all right." But there's something. But you're different. Very but much you're so. cooking. But you're giving inspirational talk. Yes. As you cook, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm not cooking at all, and I'm right. still and you still you, right. Yeah. Was your did your mom is that did you where did you get that from or where did you why uh, where did you and why did you decide to add that aspect to it? That was always a thing 
that I have inside of me. Like my friends, my family, they know like I'm that person that would always pour into other people. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just, it's a natural thing for me. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, after I went through my season of the darkness, mm -hmm. I was doing whatever God called me to do, right? And I still am. So when God put something in my heart, I'd be like, oh, okay, I need to share this with somebody. It can't just be for me. Right. Yeah. You, so celebrities, obviously everybody, uh, CJ, my producer, his wife is here, says, and this is the first time she come on the set, or the second time she Where brought she a family. At? Right there in the green. Oh, hey, girl. <laughs> She's like, I got to meet Tabitha. I got to see Tabitha. I. So many people, when they're like, well, who you got on the podcast? I'm saying, I got Tabitha Brown. Man, tell her Tabitha Brown. Tell her I love her. Aww. Tell her I love her. Everybody seems to love you. There's nothing bad to be. What does that make you feel like when so many celebrities, uh, we understand the, the, the fan base, but, I, but a lot of famous people know Tabitha Brown, loves Tabitha Brown. I mean, I feel grateful, right, to, to be loved. But the most, I think the most important part for me is that People just love me just for being me. Yes. You know, so I feel like family. And I think that's what it is for people. People mm -hmm. just feel like I'm part of their family too. Right. And that's intentional for me. Right. Like I want people to feel like we family. So that's You seem so approachable. You seem yeah. so down to earth. You don't give the like, don't come talk to me. I'm busy. Oh, I'm no. in a hurry. You give the vibe like, hey, how you doing? Come talk. Say hello. Just introduce yeah. yourself. I'm going in. I'm right. going in for the hugs. Right. I'm like, hey, how y'all? Like, right. I love that. But right. I also like how... There, I not have time for the people who help me climb. Right. You know, I am in this position, A, because God said I could have it. Right. But because people support me. Right. And so when I have events, you know, if my team was here, they would tell you, I have events, and if there's a meet and greet, you better not put a time on it for me, because I'm going to see every person. Right. I, like, literally, it, it will go from an hour to 10 hours. Right, because you yeah, you having a conversation, you taking a picture, and you having a conversation, yeah. hey, how's your day going? Yeah. You know, my mom loves you. Yeah. you and you're like... Obviously, before you had a team and before people got your number, obviously you have a team, you have a business manager. A lot of the things that were transactions that were happening was in your DM. You said oh, yeah. uh, uh, Whole Foods reached out in your DM. Absolutely. On Facebook. So <laughs> do people still reach out and try to and want to do business oh, with yes. you? yes. Absolutely. Even though you got a team that oh, you're like... Yes. <laughs> and you know, I always pray before I go into my DMs because right. I need to... I always say, God, let me see what I'm supposed to see. Right. Because there's so many. I right. never see them all. Right. Um, but there's still people who can't get to my team because, right. you know, some some things, depending on, like, you know, when your agency is big, right. they won't entertain certain things. Right. But those are the ones that I, I'll send to my other team and right. be like, I want to do this for we, them. We, you we know, it, it ain't about the money. It's about right. the people. Wow. It, so, but you also have to be careful mm -hmm. because for every good deal that could potentially come along, there's a scam. And the one thing that you don't want is the ding on Tabitha Brown's name. You work so hard for mm -hmm. this reputation and this pristine, and you like to keep it intact. So, what's the process of going through and says, okay, is it your husband? Is it your team that you get down to it and says, okay, I think this might be, this is something we might need to entertain or something like Nah, I'm gonna stay away from that. <laughs> when you mean like if it come in a DM? It, yeah, in the, it yeah. If it come in a DM, like I'll send it to my team and right. be like, you let them bet it. Yeah, bet this and see if it's real. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, but, it, but then also, I don't say yes to nothing without prayer, right? right. So I will pray about it and I'll say, okay, we can move forward. I sure appreciate you praying about this because <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, every time. When <laughs> when I told my husband, he was like, oh, you doing this? <laughs> But you 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 you've done so much. I mean, you have. Let's talk about the spices because I have a, a friend of mine, uh -huh. and she says, "Tell Tabitha that I bought fifteen of us oh. of us spices. My mom bought ten. I said, "Why the hell y'all bought ten of the same? Talk about they sell out. Yeah, they yeah. In the beginning, the first time I dropped Sunshine was my first season. Right. Uh, it sold out. I think in twenty six minutes online. And so I had no idea it was going to do that, right? And then we released it again, and then uh, maybe like six months later, it broke the site for McCormick, and it was so it sold out in like 46 minutes. Wow. Probably would have sold out quicker, but the site broke, and right. so when it got back up, it was, took about 46 right. minutes. And so then we were like, we got to put it in stores. Right. Like online is just not It's enough. not, yeah. So now it's available everywhere, now I have new spices. Right. Uh, that are now literally rolling out this spring and summer. I mean, you name, <laughs> and now you got a hair care product. Uh huh. Donna's recipe. Yeah. Is this Donna? In case you didn't know. This Donna. Okay. Yeah, this Donna. She on breakation right now. She on breakation. Breakation. Yeah. 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 Braidcation. <laughs> yeah. So, so what made you decide to come up with spices? Because you said you wanted to be an actress. Mm -hmm. 
you didn't I didn't hear you say you want to be Martha Stewart or some cooking expert. Right. But now you got spices, you cook. How did you transition? How did you weave your way and navigate your way to like, okay, uh, I'm done with this. Let me come over here. So as I started doing the videos and cooking, right, I was like literally letting God order my steps. Mm -hmm. So as I'm cooking, I'm reading comments. People are like, Tab, you need your own spices. And I'd be like, I guess maybe I, maybe I do need my own spices, okay. right? But I don't know. And you know, I'm, the first year I'm just cooking and I'm right. talking, I'm cooking, and then uh, I thought about it. I was like, you know what? I do use a lot of different spices and I'm, I'm really big on being salt free. Okay. Right? Because I know like my family uh, dynamic. Hypertension. Exactly. Uh, uh, yes. Especially with people of color as well. Yeah. And so I was like, if I could do a spice, it would have to be salt free. And so when I first started working uh, organically with McCormick, it wasn't even really a thought. I was like, oh, well, this is great. I can use they stuff because my granny used them, my mama used them. Right. And I just continued to use it. And they were like, you ever thought about doing your own spice? I was like, actually, I have. And it was an organic thing. Right. But also because my people wanted it. Right. So I wanted to give them what they asked for. Right. So how did the hair product come about? So Donna's recipe, uh, well, you know, with Donna, I had did the big chop. And right. so as she was growing out, I had a nice little fro in the beginning, a little right. small one. And so I also have stenosis in my neck from a car accident. Right. And so for a period of time, I had to lay flat on my back. Right. And so my hair started to thin in the back. Okay. And I was like, oh, Lord, I need to find something to make my hair strong again right. and make it grow back. Okay. And so I started trying to find different products, mm -hmm. but a lot of products had chemicals in them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm on this new journey of being vegan. Yeah. And I had had that headache for, you know, the year prior. I didn't want to just put anything back on my head, especially, you know, that's going to seep into my, you know, my pores. Correct. So I started trying to create my own with like essential oils and natural oils, and I just couldn't get it done on my own. And so I was doing that for almost a year trying to like, like I was like a, a chemist yeah, in yeah, the lab. Yeah, you were a mad scientist. Right, 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 in the house, in the bathroom. Yeah. And so uh, my business partner, who's my business partner now, Gina Woods, she came to me and was like, I have this idea. Donna should have her own hair care line. I was like, girl, I've been trying to do that for a year, right. you know? And so she presented her idea to me and my husband, and, and I was like, Okay, this is kind of, you know, already what Sounds I was good. doing yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's how it came to be. But it was really because I needed uh, a product for myself. Right. And once I figured out the formula, I was like, well, I can't keep this to myself. Right. I want to share it with the world. So, What have you learned about entrepreneurship and business? Because a lot of people now, we see a lot of saying, okay, I want, instead of taking a fee up front, mm -hmm. okay, let me take a percentage of the company. Let me get yeah. this and let me get that. So what have you learned? Because I read where you was like, yeah, some people got me in the beginning. They they, they 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 did a number on me. <laughs> they 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 got they got you, girl. Yeah. So in the in the very beginning, doing brand deals and partnerships, I didn't know that business. I knew SAG. Right. I knew the union. I right. knew the acting world. Right. And so I had to learn it. I'm glad they got me because they won't get me again. Right. Okay. And if you come back, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> and have. Okay. Okay. Um. So I, I learned a lot that way. Right. But the one thing I learned is that people will show up and try to act like they are, um, they have your best interest at right. hand. But you got to be like, you have to use your discernment, right? Everybody don't have your best interest at That's hand. Correct. And a lot of people want to pull from you and gain from you, right? right? And even try to take your, your, your business. Yes. You know, they'll think that they own you. Right. So I've always making it very clear that TAP is not for sale. You can do business with, with TAP, me, yeah. but you don't own me right. and you don't own my brand, right? right? So uh, that's the thing. And you just got to be very careful with business and with who you do business right. with. You cannot trust everybody. Yeah. You cannot trust everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. You yeah. heard that. No matter no matter what they say. No matter what they say. No matter what no matter what color either. Okay. Huh? No matter. They can look like you or not. Mm. But you cannot trust everybody. I get okay. You doing doing spices. I get everything. You make your spices. Most spices are created. But how do you get in touch with a lab to try to do a hair care line product uh -huh. that? All of a sudden, people ain't looking like Kojak. Women ain't looking like Kojak because that's the last thing that you want. I mean, it, you won't believe this because it's another job. It, it, it's not on there. I used to work in contract manufacturing, right? So. <laughs> Wait, woman. I know you born in Jamaica. You you born in Jamaica. I don't, you ain't no way you got these 10, 12 jobs. <laughs> I did that for like five years. <laughs> Oh. And it was it was for beauty, you know wellness and beauty products. Wow! And so I already knew. So that. So you had a background. You had a background, yeah. and so you understood. I understood it. I understood the lab. I understood you know testing. I understood Damn. formulation. I understood shipping and all that stuff. 
why uh, you know Master P pre- is always preaching about product. It, so what do you, what do you love? Because he's like you got to make money while you sleep. You cannot man. You got you got to get your rest, and you can't cook. 24 hours a day and you right. can't make beauty supplies 24 hours a day. So what is what is Tabitha most proud of what she's been able to accomplish thus far? Uh, I think the thing I'm most proud of is that I've done it all just being me. That's that's my my biggest accomplishment, never conforming in this season of my life. Right. Um, you know, I, I, th- I really think that's it, you know, and also family is the most important thing to me. Yes. You know, being a wife and being a mother and never uh, sacrificing anything over that. Like that's, I'm most proud of that. <laughs> Being an ex-professional athlete, I felt that I had to sacrifice, that I missed a lot of things with my kids mm-hmm. that I probably shouldn't have, but I felt that if I didn't, I would always look back and say, if I'd have, didn't, if I'd have studied, if I'd have worked hard, if I'd have trained hard, I'd have yeah. missed something. It seems to me that you've done a great job of not only being there for your husband and for your kids, but also being able to go full steam ahead and accomplish. Was that a big part of what you wanted? Like, I'm not sacrificing any part of my family Mm -hmm. to make one extra dollar. For me, I'm blessed because I have a husband who's my partner, right? Who literally says, babe, go, I got it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have that. So when I leave, I know that my children are taken care of. Now we only have my son in the house. You know, my daughter is is grown now. But I know I have a a safe space for my son, and he knows that mommy is working. But when it comes to major things, I'm not missing it. Right. right, I don't care how much money it is. If my son is about to graduate fifth grade, and I looked at the calendar and was like, What's, what y'all put on my calendar on this day? You, I can't go. Wow. Like, no. They were like, well, it's this amount of money. I don't care. Right. He going to graduate one time from fifth grade. Right. I can make money any day. Right. Right. So it's those major things that are important to me. Um, and my husband will tell you, like, I, I also still am human. So I'll even have parent guilt where I'm like, dang, I, I miss being able to take him to school every day. We right. literally was just having this conversation. I miss the normalcy that I used to be able to do. Right. I used to take my son, my son and my daughter to school every morning, pick them up, make their lunches, cook dinner every day. Was That was my life for a very long time. But you understood that that's part of the sacrifice. That those yes. are some of the things that you're going to have to give up yes. in order to accomplish what God, the vision that God gave you yes. and set you out on this journey. Mm-hmm. You understood that there were some of the things you're going to have to give up. I'm understanding it every day. <laughs> right? It doesn't mean I, I, I enjoy that that feeling every day because sometimes I miss it. Right. But I also look at my life and how blessed I am and right. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm still doing a different type of work right. that my family is reaping the benefit from. You've secured over 56 major brand deals, Dunkin' Donuts, Sabra, Pizza Plant. I mean, you just have so much going on. So how, do, how does Tabitha walk into a room you know your worth. You know they want to come in and give you 25% of what your worth is. So how do you go in the room, says, nah, it's worth more than that, but I still be, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. Now, have you been in the bar? Because that's exactly what I say. And I be letting them get everything out. I be like, this is so, this is nice. I Thank y'all for letting me come Yes. Yeah, just... But you know what? It's going to be a no for me. I'm I'm so grateful for to yes, be Yes, I be appreciate thoughtful. the opportunity. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for thinking of Taya. Yeah. Yeah. But no. Yeah, it's a no for Taya. Yeah. So then they come back and says, okay, so Miss Brown, how do how do we make this partnership work? Well, we start by this. What you said at the beginning, that about, mm-mm, that ain't how it's going to go. You know, for me, depending on what it is, sometimes right. it's, it ain't even about the money, right? Sometimes it's just about whatever it is. I'm like, hmm, it just don't serve me. Right. Right, there's no amount of money that's gonna make it right. serve me, right? And then it, when it comes to the money, this is the thing with, that you always have to realize. There's no amount of money enough for what I deserve. It's only, a, like, I'm, I'm priceless. Right. right, okay, okay. It's what I will accept. Oh. Right, there's no amount of money you can offer me that is what I'm worth. Right. I'm worth, I am priceless. Right. But there's an amount that I'll accept to partner with you and work with you. Okay. That's the difference. And so I just have to make a decision, do I want that or not? I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm priceless. <laughs> you are priceless. But for a nominal fee, I'll be ready to partner with you. <laughs> that's it. I like that. Yeah. So that's your, that's, that's your mindset going into it. You, do, you have a, do you have a, normally when you go into a deal, do you have a dollar amount? Do you have a, have you surprised yourself with some of the things that you've been able to negotiate? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, I definitely... I remember 
like one of the first times of, of asking for a crazy amount of money just right. to see what they was gonna say. And then when they said yes, I said, mm. Damn, I should have asked for asked more. What the heck? Yeah. That, yeah. That's what, that what your husband knows. Like, yeah. I thought you asked for more than oh, that. No, he would have been like, yeah, well, I, was, I was good with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but we're gonna go on and take what, you know, next time, you know, so, but yeah. You hosted a, a vegan competition. So, you only eat vegan. You have to, so you, how much of your time is sitting around trying to come up with different vegan recipes? Because like you say, you cook so much, mm -hmm. but you have to understand because people, most people have eaten meat all their life. Yeah. And to get them to try this and to make them like it, because that's the thing, people will eat what they like. That's right. And yeah. so how do you like, okay, you just go in the kitchen, you like, babe, I'm going to go in the kitchen. I'm going to... See what I can come up with tonight. I'm gonna see what I can come up with today. Is that how you do it? It just come up. It, it literally throughout the day. If I got a taste for something, that's what I'm gonna make. Okay. Right. And sometimes I'll dream a recipe. One of my most successful recipes is when I dreamt and I woke up that morning, did a video, and said, "Y'all, let me tell you about this dream I had." It was a vegan deviled eggs, and in the dream I was like, "But but with eggs, but they're real eggs, though, right?" No, they're mushrooms. I took the white mushrooms because I did this in the dream, and I was like, "I don't know, but I'm gonna see if it's gonna." Take so you so you can't eat any animal product. I do not. No. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm with you. I'm with you, husband. On this <laughs> she got to go on this journey alone. <laughs> I don't. I don't. You know, when I first did, I did it to save my life. Right. 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 And now, after six years of being vegan, it becomes a thought where I now connect the animals to the food. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Now I ain't gonna lie to you though. I still miss a crab leg. Do you? Oh, honey, I, you know how people count sheep? Yeah. I count crab legs in my sleep. I be telling people, you know, during the day when I'm awake, I'm vegan. But when I'm asleep, I'm pescatarian because I be eating crab legs in right. my dreams. What about ice cream? You don't, I mean, you don't miss sweets or like, like cake and cookies? Do you? All that stuff you still can eat. You just don't use egg, real eggs and you don't use... Butter and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, there's vegan butter, there's vegan milk, there's all that stuff. Honey, I can, you gonna have to come to the house and eat. Okay, I, I'm. A, but I don't bake. I'm not a baker. And I was already allergic to milk like most of us. Yeah, most of us, yeah. Yeah. I, I keep, if, I'm a, if I think I'm gonna eat something that has dairy, I'm gonna take, keep lactate with me. Say that again. If I think I'm gonna eat something dairy, I keep lactate with me. Why we do that? Cause I like ice cream sometimes. And I wanna eat some cheese if I wanna eat some cheese. But why do you, but why you have to keep the lactate? Cause what, what happens? My, my stomach, it don't agree with my stomach. Wonder why? <laughs> But it agree with me, Tabitha. I tell my stomach, shut up! I'm gonna eat this. But there are other options for you so that you can still get all the taste that you're looking for without the bubble goods. Well, Hollywood and I, we did have some vegan. <laughs> we, we had some vegan barbecue did with Hollywood. Hollywood tore it up. See? He there tore are, it up. There are options. I'm gonna have to get you on some oat ice cream or some cashew ice cream. It's amazing. Hollywood, you down? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's very good. I'm gonna let Hollywood go be yeah. the guinea pig on that. <laughs> You had a restaurant, but you never opened it. No, I opened it. You opened it. Uh -huh, and we closed it. Yeah. It was too many problems with the building, the landlord. Another thing where I said, you can't trust everybody. Yeah. And so we had to close it down because it was just too much uh, damage that he would not fix. Right. So, do is uh, opening another restaurant, is that something that you would like to do? I think if I do, because that was a partnership that I partnered with Kill My Name. Right. Kill My Name, I love the restaurant. It's still open in Chicago. Right. And so I just partnered with him to open that one here in L.A. If I do it again, it has to be my restaurant. Right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, be a vegan. Oh, 100%. But it, are you, or is it going to be like um, breakfast? Is it going to be lunch? Is it going to be brunch? I don't know. Uh, you know, I, gotta, I have to make a decision to do it first. I think my, the big vision that I have would be like a retreat. Right. And on the the location of the retreat, like, you know, an oasis or an right. oasis where you can come, right. there would be kind of like a bed and breakfast there, right. but like a home house where right. you can come for breakfast and you can come for dinner type right. of thing. But that's like a, a, a vision that I have for later. Have a company ever tried to change the way you do content? Oh, yeah. Even after, even after the success that they've seen you enjoy, they're still willing to try to change what you do, how you do it. Honey, that, yes. What? But people are crazy in the world. <laughs> but ta, but ta, uh, they know. But they know Listen, what they. They love you, and then they say, "We love exactly what you do." Now we want to show you this video, and then they play the video, and the people don't look like me, and they say, "If you could do it a little bit like this." No. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's a no for me. Do do people when they look at you? I, I think the thing is, is sometimes people the old saying is that people take kindness for weakness. Uh huh. You have a smile all the time. You seem to be a very outgoing, a very personable person. Mm -hmm. Do you think people take that as a weakness and try to try to get over on you all the time? But I'm very smart. But they they will try it, and I let them. I, I like to watch them. Do you get a have? Does she? I'm gonna ask him. I'm gonna ask him when he comes. Do you get, have, have, do you get upset? Yes. But how do you, but, but y'all upset is like, guys, y'all know I'm not going to be able to do that, right? <laughs> well, you know, it takes a lot to get me upset. Right, okay. Um, most times when it comes to like that type of stuff, right. it's not going to upset me. It, it's just a matter of, oh, man, I, I'm so sorry that you didn't see me for me. But you know what? I hope you found what you're looking for. Right. Right? But that's not something that. That's not, that upset. doesn't get you upset. Things upset me is when you mess with my family. You mess with my money and my time. Right. Because I use all those things for my family. Right. And for myself. Mm -hmm. So how is it that, I mean, this is, you know, in content creators, what you do, what you do, there's a very large, there's a, a space for it, but it's a limited people that's in that space. How is it? Are you guys friendly? Are you receptive to one another? Is it cutthroat? Oh, and I love everybody. Does like, everybody love there, There's enough room for everybody, right? So I, did, I never compare myself to anybody. Right. I don't really care what nobody else do. I, doing. I applaud everybody. Right. Uh, we all different. So since they print money, we shouldn't try to cut, backstab, and undermine somebody else to get to what keep. What God has for me is for me. What He has for you is for you. There's nothing we can do to stop that. So what God is setting for for me, even people, Hollywood, you heard that. <laughs> Hollywood, you heard that, Hollywood. <laughs> so, but, you know, look, I'm not going to break. This is not no, interrupt the normal schedule programming. We know vegan. When we hear vegan, we think of someone that doesn't look like you. Oh, yeah. I, that's what I thought. <laughs> when I, listen, back in the day, and I've said this many times, when I used to hear the word vegan, yeah. I thought that it was for white women who did yoga. Right. I did. Yes. And, and nobody was really vegan. I heard a vegetarian. Right, vegan. right, 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 right. And then I thought, well, if that's not the case, it's the people who walk around picketing, you know, right. and they wearing the, the, you know, the blood all over mm -hmm. them and doing yes. that type of activism. Okay. And I didn't want to do that. And so I knew that when I made the decision to become vegan, I wanted to be a source of, of a different type of light. And so I always wanted to be approachable and I wanted people to be curious and to want to try it. And so I did it with love and laughter and a little bit of comedy, but informative. So I have probably converted, I can, of course, can't give you the number, but more people than any, you know, traditional activist. Um, more people mm -hmm. than you can imagine come to me and say, I'm vegan because of you. I, I eat plant-based. Me and my family eat plant-based now because of you. And I'm like that. I've never told anybody in the last six years, I've never told not one person, you need to go vegan. Never. So how do you, so when you're at home, do you cook vegan for you and cook him bacon, <laughs> hamburgers or what? <laughs> I used to, when we when I first went vegan that first year, I was cooking like them two meals and I was like, mm-mm, I, mm -mm. I can't keep doing this. So then I just figured I have to make all our favorite things vegan and make it good and everybody loved it. So all my favorite non-vegan things, I turned them into vegan meals. So he got to go out. So he had to go out and get if he want a steak or if he want a burger, some chicken. Well, he yeah. don't eat that. He eats chicken and fish, but uh, he can order it or <laughs> he do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm looking at athletes have turned vegan: Chris Paul, Kyrie Irving, Venus Williams, Lizzo. So I'm trying to figure out, man, how would I be able to keep my my musculature and stay, you know, strong? You ever seen a um, a gorilla? Yeah. What you think they eat? They eat grass, but they eat four hundred pounds of it. <laughs> 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 nah, but they did. But but I think in the beginning mm -hmm. had, but that's all they eat. I think the thing is, if you had never gotten a taste, it's hard to miss what you've never tasted. Well, yes and no, yeah. right? I think that you have to have a very specific why, okay. right? Um, eventually, you're not going to do dairy anymore because you're not going to like how it continues to make you feel. Okay. Okay? If meat was killing me, 
I'd be crazy to keep eating. That is correct. Right? Yeah. So a lot of times we are reactive people. Right. We do things out of something happening. So correct. we react to it. Right. Instead of being proactive. Yeah, proactive. We wait uh, many times. We wait until we get sick before we try to get better. Right. Right? Instead mm -hmm. of just saying, let me be proactively trying to make sure I'm as healthy as I can be. Right. And so when it comes to me, my why was life or death. Right. I chose life. And then I also got in my mind was like, I just don't want to eat dead animals anymore. I just right. don't like the thought of it anymore. Right. Um, I don't even like the smell of it when it's raw. It, right. it turns my stomach. Okay. Now, I ain't going to lie to you, honey. I can smell a cookout a mile away and be like, Lord, have mercy. Ooh, I sure miss that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is cooking. But, you know, that's the difference in not right. thinking about what you see. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's, there's definitely a way to incorporate it mm -hmm. and form new habits. Right. And I always tell people this too. Don't look at it as though you're taking something away from yourself. Right. Look at it as though, oh, I'm giving myself something new to try. Right. I'm gaining six months, six years to my life. Maybe. That's the way you look at it. That's the way, because you said you had, had you, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Had you not had the autoimmune, had you not had the headaches for a year and seven months, had you not had the, the, uh, the lethargy. Would you, do you believe you'd have gone vegan? No, I didn't have a reason, right? Not necessarily. But I may have eventually, only because of, oh, I heard vegans be skinny. But then I got vegan and got thick. Because <laughs> <laughs> now, now I be eating to eat. Right. Um, and also, I don't eat to look a certain way right. anymore. I used to starve myself. But let me ask you a question. Could you do you believe you can be a vegan in rural North Carolina? Because a lot of it, because it gets hard because you're in California, you have a lot of options mm -hmm. in Carol in, 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 in Cali. Yeah. You don't have those same options, especially in rural South Carolina, Georgia, or the rural parts of the South. I could be a better vegan in rural North Carolina. Really? Because I can you grow, grow your own, own food. food, right? Most of our you know, parents and grandparents were mostly vegan. Yeah, they ate what they grew. They ate what they grew, and meat was a delicacy. Yeah. They only had it on the weekends. Yeah. My daddy was one of 12. My daddy always said, he said, you know, until you became vegan, I never thought about it, but we only ate chicken on Sundays. Mm -hmm. He said, we only ate pinto beans, and from the Lama garden, beans and, and rice, green, and, mustard and green, greens but yeah. during the week. Right. He said, well, you know, we had, some, we had, you know, we had fat back in the green, though. <laughs> You know, we had a fat bag. We had to have a fat bag for Listen, turkey decks. That's only if y'all had, had that. That was a special occasion, though. You, you, didn't, you didn't get... You it wasn't all the time, yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know what? I think this is the part of the show we probably should invite your husband on. Bring him on in the room. Where y'all want me at? Where we going? Is it really No, you're going to sit. Right you sit right next to the table. Yeah. Ain't no backrest yeah. right there in that back. We're no, yeah, you, you're, not gonna be able to, you're not gonna be able to lean back. I'm sorry, All bro. Alright, we're good. They say behind every great man is a great woman. But I think behind every great woman that's like your wife, there has to be a great man. Because you have to be secure enough in yourself because you kind of become the afterthought. And you seem to be very, very okay with that. You guys have been together over 25 years, been together for 20 years. When you started dating her, did you see y'all here? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know what? It had... I didn't really have much vision. Mm -hmm. um, people always ask me about, you know, very similar questions. And I always say, I wouldn't with her for that. Right. I was with Tab because of how she made me feel. Right, right. right? And I, and yes, I thought she was a little crazy. <laughs> I was attracted to crazy. Uh, you yeah. Know what I mean? That's the difference. Right. Right. So I'm I'm with her because of my attraction to that crazy. I when she would tell me, one day I'm gonna be on TV, one day, you know, whatever, I would get tickled. Well, I would get tickled because I can look in her eyes and you really believe this. Yeah. Right? And it made her happy. It made her really, really happy. A happiness that I kind of... Uh, I wish that I could tap into from my own childhood. Mm -hmm. I remember look, I remember feeling like what I've seen in her eyes. Right. Like saying, man, at some point in my life, I lost that. Right. Right? You're a true believer of what you're saying. Right. So whatever it was, I was like, it, it, I didn't really 
try to believe it. I just wanted to keep her happy and right. say, all right, man, let's go for let's it. Let's go. As long <laughs> as it's not hurting us. Even, even though you might have not believed in it, you never told her that. You're like, baby, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> I think you can do it. Yep, I would. <laughs> I would. And then it would be times where I'd be like, all right, Tab, wait a minute. Hold up. Like the story she told you about moving. Right. right? I'm always of the thinking. Uh, my thinking was, what are we currently doing? Right. Right? Can it hurt us? Right. Can your vision or this dream or this thing that you believe in, can it hurt us? If we ain't currently doing anything better and what you're saying can't hurt us, let's try it. <laughs> wow. Let's go for it. Right. Right. It's not going to hurt us, so let's put a plan together. As long as we got a plan and we got each other and... Ain't nothing else going on. Let's go do it. Let's try it. You guys started dating, if you could say the eighth grade is dating, yeah. Yeah. in the eighth grade. When you saw him for the very first time, <laughs> what did you think? Oh, I saw him way before eighth grade. Yeah. We've known each other since about, what, fifth grade? Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was cute with his little curly hair and stuff. I ah. him. <laughs> uh, but he was mean. That's what I thought. He was, I was like, oh, he got a little attitude. Ah, okay. you like, I'm going to tame it. Yeah, but then in uh, in eighth grade, you know, he was playing football, mm -hmm. and I was the uh, football manager. You know, I had a job in eighth grade. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Come on! Damn! <laughs> and so when we would do the bus rides, right. I just would be looking at him, like, you know, the, the eye contact. I was like, kind of like him, you know? Did you know she liked you? Yeah, I was kind of popular back then, man. Oh, you popular? Oh, you yeah, you yeah. popular? That's, that's yeah, I was why a man I, on football. Oh, you, you okay, you yeah, popping. He yeah, was. I was a man. He was a, yeah, he was a so. man. Everybody liked Chance, okay? Uh, he had a girlfriend, though. What? And you I, took him? And I had a little boyfriend. Okay, 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 okay. Now, this get good. Go ahead. But we, but we, went to a, we went to a birthday party. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all came separate, left together. We came separate, and we ended up kissing at the birthday party. What? I don't know what I did it. Damn! Damn! Yeah, that's all I Chance, come on, Chance! Hey, and hey, she kissed me. No, you kissed me. Whoa! <laughs> no, 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 no. We get that in a minute. We get that in a minute. I'm talking about you two came with somebody, and y'all... Because... He ain't want her no way. He didn't, it, it, it didn't seem like you want him either. The thrill was gone in those eighth grade relationships. Oh my God. Yeah. This was the thing. The eighth grade dance. Eighth grade. Listen, his but this is the funny thing. His girlfriend was happy he broke up because she liked somebody else too. Ch my boyfriend was a little hurt, but <laughs> but junior high crush. That's yeah. What, it was. It wasn't real. But chance, you know, he was a man back then. Right. Yeah. But you know, I broke up with him in eighth grade. I, Hold up, you kissed him. Hold up, you oh, done yeah. made the man break up with his girlfriend. Did me dirty. He still, he still did, kind of hey, did me dirty. After all these years, he still hold on to that. Yeah. Shame yeah. just rubbed my whole life. <laughs> yeah, but like all, all, go almost all the eighth grade. But my sister, she older than me. She's six years older. She said, listen, you better go to ninth grade to the high school. Yeah. There's a lot of boys over there. You don't want a little boyfriend. So I told him, I said, listen, we got to break up because my sister says a lot of boys over at the high school. I got to see what's out there. <laughs> and so he hated me for breaking up. That's why, you know, in high school, he wouldn't even speak to me. But that's how I end up, we, I have a, a stepdaughter because he had a baby in high school. Mm -hmm. So I always tell him, see, I'd let you go and, and now, see, if I had a, we had a say together. We, that's we a great way here. to transition. I remember I heard, read an interview where you told your mom you would never marry, you would never date a man, <laughs> let alone marry a man with a child. Very true. What changed? I was 15. Okay. We were at a basketball game at high school. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, he couldn't stand me. Right. And so uh, at the game, yeah, my mom would sit on the bleachers, and he walked up, and he was standing on the corner of the, of the wall with his little girlfriend. They all hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, you did it on purpose, didn't you? You wanted to see it. You, you, probably, you got your little kids in. Too, yeah, go back, Daddy. I yeah. wouldn't, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even think about her. When, you, she, told, when she told me the story yeah. years later, I, I remember it. Right. right. Yeah. I wouldn't think about and, it. And I looked and I just kind of like rolled my eyes like, mm, you know. Whatever. And my mama yeah. was like, I don't know why you're doing that. I was like, what? She was like, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. She said, that little girl going to get pregnant and they're going to have a baby. But that's your husband. I said, oh, well, you don't know me because uh, I would never marry a man with kids. That's what I'm supposed to think at 15. Right. And so uh, mama was right. She yeah. was right. On graduation day, years later on graduation day, uh, 
My mama came to me and she said, um, go get Chance. I, I want y'all to have a picture with y'all's cap and gown. I'm going to use this at y'all wedding. I said, would you stop? Why would you say something weird like that? that <laughs> my mother-in-law so was my biggest fan. She loved Chance. She loved me, yeah. She was my biggest fan. And she used that picture at our wedding. Yeah, and she was gifted, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Your mom saw something that you didn't see at the time. Mm -hmm. You had like, you done broke up with me. You ain't want me, so I, yeah. you did your thing. And here, all these years, fifth grade, so you're fifth grade, you're probably, what, 11 years old, 12 years old? Yep. Yep. All that time, you guys... We were from the same hometown, yeah. you know, same small, mm -hmm. small city. Uh, but I would see him in high school. I would always have this like, little pain in my stomach when I would see him. Yeah. It was like a feeling. I always tell us guilt. He said it was guilt. Ah! <laughs> God, you did me dirty. That's right, yep, you did me dirty. That's guilt. That's what that is. But I went to college in, in Miami. Right. And he went to college in North Carolina. Right. And so I was there. And one night I woke up in the middle of the night. And he was the only person I could think about. And I was like just thinking about all the years that I would see him. And I had this pain in my stomach. And we had kind of became friends again in our senior year. Right. And I just had this thought of like, I think I'm in love with him. And so I found his number in the middle of the night. By the time I called him, it was about 3.34 in the morning. And I called his, kept calling the room. His roommate answered. I was like, I need to speak to Chance Brown. It's an emergency. And so when he got on the phone, I was like, I know this might sound crazy. I was like, but I think I'm in love with you. I was like, so I just told him, I was like, I, all these years I would see you. And I would have this pain in my stomach. I was like, but I, I'm thinking about all these different things. And if you don't think I'm crazy, call me back tomorrow at this number. He ain't say nothing on the phone. And then I, I hung Chance, up. Chance, I thought you were crazy. I had to stall out a little bit. Ah, you <laughs> I waited all day. No, 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 no. I had to stall out a little bit, man. I had to but you, out. yeah. But obviously, you had felt the exact same way. Yeah. You know, um, the crazy thing is, I held on to it my entire high school, school uh, years, right? And I would see her, <clears throat> I'd see her in passing, and I, it was always something about this one particular girl who always, she's always been full of joy. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was a feeling that, that I always say um, that only my mom could give me. Like, it make me feel like I can do anything. Right. That's what I remembered about right. Tab the entire time. Now, I, I didn't start living a whole different life. I'm in college and went through high school, playing sports, popular by my own means, right? And <clears throat> nobody could ever make me feel like that, besides my mom and this one particular girl. And this was now after a few uh, incidents, like I like to say, you know, things that where a lot of people had kind of started looking at me as being problematic, mm -hmm. right? So you got somebody who still got no, 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 like, no marks on their record, mm -hmm. got their whole life ahead of them, right? right? <clears throat> and she's still admiring your boy. And I'm like, man, this girl still got that little bit of crazy in her that I just, I can't kick. It's crazy for you right. to call me after four years in the middle of the night and say what you said on the phone to me. Right. That was crazy, but I was attracted to it. Right. I was like, man, this girl's still, this girl weird. Right. <laughs> but I can't kick it. I'm going to call her. So I called her. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey, and. So when you call her the phone, tab, chance, what'd you say? <laughs> she, first, she had a uh, she had a roommate that didn't speak English. She was in Miami. Okay. And I called her, and uh, I just remember the roommate answering the phone, and I'm trying to say her name like right. she and I'm like making like this this can't be. <laughs> I think I got the number wrong. And she, I could tell when she grabbed the phone, she got on the phone excited. You no, know, I had been waiting by the phone. Yeah. You've been day. waiting all day. All day. But you knew he was going to call this. Yeah. I did. <laughs> so when she got I on did. the phone, I, I just, hey, I kept it, I tried to keep it G. You tried to keep it G, did Yeah, I tried to, I was like, hey, you called me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He going to say, did you really call me at yeah, 4 o'clock you know. in the morning? I yeah. was like, yep. And I didn't want to be jumping out there, so I just let her do the most, you know, most do all the talking. talking. Okay. But in my head, I'm like, I had told my homeboys that in college, I was like, I had one friend who I can always, you know that one friend? Yeah, friend, yeah. You. So I'm telling him all the reasons why the whole day. I'm like, man, this girl called me. I'm about trying to live my life, and now she want to come and get your boy back. I'm acting like I'm somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you was. And he waited, and he waited. My boy Ty, I love him to this day. And he said, you scared, fool. Man, you going to call her, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, nah, I ain't going to call her. 
I waited till the end of the day. End of the day. <laughs> and I called her, you know. Um, and I knew I was. You know what I mean? Like, it was just one of those where I was like, I don't want to be this dude. You know, that ego thing. Right, right, in. right, right. Well, I called her. Yeah, I called her. And here we are. <laughs> 25 years later. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Is marriage everything you thought it would be, you two thought it would be? It is nothing that we thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> is that good or bad? It's it's good. It's good. Because you yeah. you guys make it sound so perfect. But there has to be some disagreements at some point. Oh, it's a whole, oh, it's a whole bunch of disagreements. <laughs> 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 what about the hold on? What about the fairy tale? For Phil Gray to die, all I heard was fairy tale. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh -uh. See, don't be confused by. Okay, that. okay. <laughs> marriage. See, what I, you know what? I didn't come from a house. I didn't come from a family of marriage. Okay. Right. I didn't have no understanding of what marriage was. Right. Her parents were married, and you know, uh, church going. You know that. You know. Um, so I didn't have an understanding of what marriage was. So when you asked that question, I'm like, I had this ridiculous idea, this really just male perspective of what marriage is. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have this. This going. I ain't gotta be out here chasing this because it's at the house. Right. <laughs> that was really in, in simple what it was. But as we uh, as we grew together. It became something completely different. It became, you know, that that's my best friend. You know, that's that that's that unconditional thing. That's that thing to where even when I'm I'm in I'm not ready to hear what she's saying, I got to revisit it. And, and now, it's a possibility that she could be right. Most this is the one. This is this is the person, the one person on this earth <laughs> right. who, even outside of my mom, right? Now my mom, I'm always right. I'm her right. baby. You yeah. feel me? <laughs> right. But this is the one person that's going that has no interest in trying to backdoor me or get one over on me, I got to consider it. And that's invaluable. You know what I mean? Right. That's, you know, so I started to learn what marriage truly is. And also in the aspect of, it's, it's like a Fortune 500 company. You know what I mean? It's, it's that thing to where you say, look, if you don't take pride in anything else, you should be able to take pride in this companion that is building your legacy. You know, where your kids will be able to, a lot of people don't have, like I'm listening to you interview my wife, right? And she, you asked her the question, what are, what's the one thing that you're most proud of, right? I knew she was going to say that, right? But what I value out of all of this that I didn't have growing up is that my great grandkids will be able to go and find something with the Brown family name on it. They'll be able to say, my great grandmama, she wrote two books. My great-grandma got nominated for this. My great-grandmama is the reason I'm able to go to this nice school. My great... I ain't have none of that. Those things right there is what marriage turned out to be and more important than what I thought marriage was about was, you know, those male right. ego-driven dumb things and uh, materialistic things. You're from the South like right. I am. Yeah. And the marriage, when you got home, the meal was on the table. The wife cooked. Mm-hmm clean, did all those things. And what the man said, I don't know how it was in your house, but what the man said went. There, right. It wasn't no, okay, let's think about it. Let's talk this through. He said, we go in the church. We went mm -hmm. to church. He said, we go in here. We go in there. But I'm looking at you. It really is a 50-50. Yes. And that's what I, I, I treasure that the most. I don't have to carry all that weight. Right. So when, you know how you started with me being able to play the back? Yeah. I have no issue with that. Wow. I have no issue with that because because you but you know a lot of men would a lot of men would feel emasculated no. if their if their wife or their their significant other because you you she say hey you you the police officer yeah she said set that down yeah I got us baby that was the plan and that's because of that little bit of crazy right ah! so, <laughs> so look so very, from the very beginning I'm not lying to you I could literally come in the house and tell my wife I wanted to be an astronaut. And the next day, she gonna have the paperwork, everything laid. That's the kind of support. That's the kind of support that I got from right, my wife. Right. I'm gonna order the soup from I Amazon. Can say, <laughs> I can say, hey, look, she was that kind of crazy. Right? right. So, I got all of that prior to what the world see. Right. Now. Right. See, they don't they don't know that portion of the story. Right. How she was there supporting me and making me feel like an alpha male and king. She right. been treating me like a king. 
for the majority of our relationship. Wow. Believing in me when I say, hey, no. Nah. Even before they knew who Tabitha Brown was. So she was treating you like this before she was, hey, I'm Tabitha Brown. Absolutely. God is good. All that. Yeah. I just read the and other day. Believing in me. And I, and, I, and I need people to understand that. Believing when I say, I got us. Yeah. Right? And, and even when I didn't believe in myself, finding a way to get me back up into my belief system so that I could take care of my family. So she's been playing second so well that I learned from her how to do it. And, what I, and now I need to be a soldier for her. Right. right? I'm, I'm going to be a soldier for her. So it's easy for me. And it, especially when it's coming like this right. in abundance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fit to mess this up. Yeah, man, come on now. I'm good. <laughs> I read Gabrielle Union. She said her and her husband split everything 50-50. And I'm listening to you guys, and, you know, marriage is a is a, is a person-to-person thing. What works in their marriage might not work in this marriage, and it might not work for you guys. So what are your thoughts, Tab? Let me get you first. What are your thoughts on you guys splitting things 50-50? Uh, I don't know, I really know about 50-50 because it, it's 100-100. Right. Right. What's mine is his and, and what's his is mine. Like, right. we, when we started our relationship, we had one bank account. One. Right. We both had a debit card. That was it. Was there anything in it? Honey, it's mm-hmm. an overdraft fee. It was an overdraft fee. She was a killer, son. But we, you know, that's when we both, we both was working at the call center together, Right. right. So our, all our money went together. We, right. we balanced it together. We kept a notebook, and we would do bills in the notebook, and we would talk about what, and how I much say, we going to have and in I, there. Our real savings, we only had that account because it was starting to be a part of life where you had, that's how you, but our real savings was yeah. in a Nike shoebox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So it's <laughs> always been our money together. Right. And now we have multiple accounts, but we're both still on them all. So there's no money that he don't know about. There's no money I don't know about. We just in it together. Wow. Work so to see Tab because it, this is not traditional. This is the different way of doing things. Normally, the husband goes off to work, mm-hmm. the wife stays at home, takes care of the kids. Okay, boom. Now you have a very non-traditional, mm-hmm. and you like you said, you like I'm cool with it, bro. I'm cool with it. I'm good. How do you? Because a lot of times it's the homeboys. Because they always got something to say, man, I can't believe you let your wa- your woman take care of you. It's talking all crazy. But because you had known her for so long, mm-hmm. and you guys had been together for so long before, it didn't even bother you, did it? Nope. And that's why. That's <laughs> And you you just summed it up. It didn't. There's, I've, I've, I only know one other couple like me and my wife that knew each other so long and grew up together. So... And I really kind of keep my circle tight. Got to you know, be I don't really, with that. Yeah, I don't really. So I, I haven't encountered too many people in my immediate circle. Mm-hmm. And I've had quite a few people, especially when I moved here to L.A., to kind of tell me that we weren't going to make it and, you know, all this because it's just impossible. Right. I'm a country boy. You ain't seen the city yet. You don't know what kind of women out here, that right. type of thing. Um, but I, when I came out here, I came out here with a goal. Right. And that goal was for us to make something out of nothing. Right. So I, I found my I just associated with people who were married, other young people who were married or other people who were married and like minded. And when it started turning, you know, going left with negative thinking and negative, I kind of put a yeah. wedge in there right. to protect what I got in my household. Wow. I heard Steve Harvey had, like I said, I had him on. He said a blended family is hard. How was it, you know, your daughter accepting Tab and Tab understanding? Because I think the thing is that you hear a lot of kids, you're not my mom, you're not my dad. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell your tail up like I'm your mom or your dad. You better hush. <laughs> <laughs> hard. I, it's hard. It is definitely hard, but I don't think it's because of the children, right? The adults make things hard, right? Really? Absolutely. So for me, I've been uh, Leah's stepmom since she was two. So she don't know nothing else. Right. Right. Her parents were never together. Right. So she never saw that. Right. So all she knows is this. Uh, and it's always been tab. I ain't never, like, I was a stepmom before I was a mother. Wow. Right. I, I had that role before I was a mom. Right. So, uh, and I always loved it. 
Right. It, you know, it was always a, a fun thing for me, and I still do. I mean, she's good and grown now. She about to be 28, so wow. she grown, grown, but yeah. And it's hard because of just, even too, with us moving mm -hmm. and separating ourselves, there's a culture in North Carolina of how you raise kids. Right, yes. absolutely, then, in the South. Yeah, yeah, then there's a difference, and we, want, we, we didn't necessarily bring everything with us on how we wanted to raise our kids mm -hmm. to That's L.A. A lot of it. But we brought a lot of it, but there are some indifferences, right? right? So yeah. when those two worlds, you know, it's like they collide, the adults have a problem with yeah. it. You get what I mean? So We also learned as we, as we were parenting our children that we had together, we were learning that, oh, wait, just because this is how it was for us, this don't work for our kids. Right. And there was yeah. a lot of things I wanted to understand. You can't discipline your kids like you got discipline. Nah. No, you're going no. to jail. <laughs> you're going to jail. <laughs> if it's simple as that, you going to jail. Right, exactly. Like, that ain't working, okay? Ain't no, work. no. Uh, you can't go, go out there and get no switch off the palm tree, okay? No. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it, was, it was just different. And I think also not being uh, in North Carolina, you know, with my stepdaughter, where she was still living with her mom, mm -hmm. and we were here, even that was hard. Right. Right? But we made it, of course, work the best that we could. Because mm -hmm. we won a lot of years with no money. Right. <laughs> so, Chance, you're a basketball coach now. Mm hmm So, <clears throat> obviously, you like basketball. So, who's your team? <laughs> I roll with LeBron, man. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Well, so, you roll with go. So... <laughs> Always I, have. Hey, listen. Wherever he go, I'm going. Right. Right. So I don't like to. I, I don't like to claim teams. Right. You know, I I didn't. You claim player. Lot of you you yeah. was LeBron. Man, the, my whole team thing went out. Literally when Mike retired. Right. And then LeBron came in and he convinced me that he hey, he was the man for the job. Right. And then the new wave of how how players move, move and everything. Around. Yeah. Yeah, I rode with Braun, man. I'm wherever he at. That's where I'm at. A guy that's been in the lose an awful lot lately is John Morant. We saw the incidents that he had with the guns waving around on IG Live. If he was your son, what type of advice would you give him? Because, you know, and I tell people this, people don't understand this. When the child becomes the provider, it changes the, the, the dynamic in a, in, a, in, a, in a relationship. Because you, as a father, you provide. Mm -hmm. But once he becomes a professional athlete or he becomes famous and then he takes over that role, the roles have not changed. It shouldn't because the dynamic is you're the father, he's the son. But when he starts paying for the house, then the car knows. And he starts paying for everything that you have or the family has. You kind of treat him differently even though you should. See, I think the mistake is in, a, in wherever you start treating him differently is where you've already messed up. Yeah. You've already messed up. I don't think that... <clears throat> So case in point, the dynamic change with me and my wife. Right. It does, I, no hesitation when I feel some kind of way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak my mind. Right. Because you're a man. I'm a man, yeah. right? And I value this relationship and our future more so than I do anything that this money can do for us. Right. So if he was my son, to answer your question, um, I would really have to sit down and have a heart to heart with my son and try to try to find out, man, what, what is your infatuation with guns? And <clears throat> bring him, I, I, I just, I, I really don't understand it, right? I mean, I need to, and I need to get some kind of understanding of why you feel the need to one, have one, mm -hmm. to two, show it off to the world. Right. <clears throat> Three, what is it that you don't understand about this blessing, right? That <clears throat> it's been given to you. It's been given to you. You you mm -hmm. worth, I mean, I don't know, but I, I imagine he worth about $200 million, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And I would try to probably shed some light on him of what that really means. So he can, so because it is to, I don't sometimes think that we, I think we make an assumption about the youth mm -hmm. and that they should understand it. I deal with kids mm -hmm. and I'm the over explainer. I'm the dude. I'm the dude that's like, nah, I bumped that. I'm not doing what y'all accustomed to doing and trying to explain and get it done in 45 seconds because right. Instagram and social media has now mm -hmm. turned the world into 90 seconds. Let's get it all done. Right. Kids are now starting to think that's their that's their expectation of of, of attentiveness, right? Yeah. I'm nah, nah. I'm the dude that's like, nah, we're gonna talk yeah. until I feel like you got it, right? So he, I don't think that he is. 
of understanding and taking the type of pride as a young black man. Strong emphasis on black man that you are you are now responsible for generations. That's right. Okay, let's make it personal. If you don't, if it's not that big of a deal for you and the kids out in the world that you don't know personally, let's sit down and I want you to, I want you to really think about the life that you want your grandchild to have. Your now his child. Mm -hmm. And then think about how they're gonna view you when they go to, to like with well, my wife. I'm telling you, that's the most important thing to me. I love the fact that we can that at 90 I can envision. One of my great grandkids coming to me and saying, yeah, man, it's grandmama right there. Right there, right there. They can't lie about it. They can't change it. It's right here. We right. got it. And I think that's where I would start is trying to something there mm -hmm. because there's a disconnect mm -hmm. in the world of those type of things where it's like we ain't sending the message home. And that's where I would start as a dad. Like, look, man, I'm proud of you, but you need to be proud of yourself. Right. You need to, you need to, own some of this. You need to see what this really is. This is, and, and if he ain't had a history lesson, he need to get one. That's where I would start. I'm gonna get you out of here on this one. <laughs> What's your keys to a success in business and in marriage? Oh, honesty. In both, mm -hmm. right? If I can trust you, we can build a mountain, right? If, if there's trust there, if we're honest, we can actually have a conversation. We do all the things that we need in truth. If honesty is involved. Absolutely. I would just like to add, just promoting and encouraging your partner to be okay with change. I think sometimes we kind of, how we, how you started out is how I always want you to be. Oh no, that ain't going. So I think you should, you know, encourage change and welcome it and be okay with it with your partner growing and growing in any direction and not feel threatened by them outgrowing you. And that's in business too. Yeah. Cause you guys, cause you grow every day. Tabitha is different today than she was yesterday. Yes. And she'll be different tomorrow than she was today. And likewise for chance. And so you have to be ready to adapt to that change. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Be Absolutely. okay with it, expect it. On, on day one, when you get married, when you say, I do, start thinking about it. Ah, <laughs> she ain't going to be like this next week. <laughs> or that night. Hey, yeah. she, hey. right. The honeymoon might be a little yeah. different than what you think. Guys, you guys seem like you guys have you guys have so much fun. You seem like you have so much fun together. We do. You guys have been together. You know. You can, I bet you can finish her sentence. And she, she can finish your sentence. Because you guys have been together that long that you know what each other's thinking. Yeah. yeah. Well, most times, yeah. Yeah, and then sometimes she'll surprise me. I'm like, man, what are you? <laughs> like, there go the change. <laughs> <laughs> so I did bring you some some things. Okay, okay, well, thank you. Okay, very good. So it's a, a couple of things, that, and some of this might have to go to some people. Okay. That you you know they're gonna say, oh, she didn't give me that, but this is my cookbook. Okay. In case you don't want that it, stomach it, issue going. And this is a this a vegan cookbook. <laughs> it's a vegan cookbook. Okay. This is uh, my first book, Feeding the Soul. So that's all about my, my life and my journey. And then this is a, a working journal that accompanies that one. Okay. All right. And so then, so you can get in the kitchen. Nah, now nah, okay. we talking. You can get in the kitchen with all the seasons and things. So these are my new ones along with the original sunshine. Okay. Very good garlic, like sweet, like smoky. And these are all salt free. So I look out for and these are your saute blends. And then, well, uh, you got a name for your hair? No, nah, you know, I just got, you, you, you know, a, I'm old school. I mean, I had that same yeah. haircut since 72. I know, but you got to name them. You got to name them. Oh, so I got to name them. Okay. You got to name them. So this is Donna's recipe. Okay. To get you together a little, a little thanks. Or you can gift it because somebody over there, I feel like her energy is already on <laughs> You, You see, you see that too? <laughs> I think she came here to get, she right. knew you was going to bring a goodie bag and she came to take this from me. Right. But this is sweet potato pie. Wow. So Donna's recipe, so I did sweet potato pie because I don't bake. But Donna does, so she right. says she made the uh, okay. desserts for your hair. Okay. But these are all, all for you, and then, you know, if you want the bag as well, this is hey, I want the bag. my collection from Target. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I need the bag to take the stuff home. I don't know if I'm going to take the, the hair products home, Emma. <laughs> CJ, that's, that's $50 I'm charging. Uh, I just got yeah, it for but... free, but it's $50 for you. Oh, that's right. Uh, Chance said since we gave you something, then we probably... Oh, yeah, we got the car. Yeah, we, we got a bottle. <laughs> we, we got... We, def we definitely got... We just definitely got a bottle. And... I a, should, little, a little something. And, uh, 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 you see my hoodie. 
I'm, we're gonna get you one. What oh, size? What size? Well, what size? Large. Large. Yes. large. Okay. And a medium for me. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, we'll get I that. love that. We'll get that to you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. This has been great. This has been unbelievable. Yeah. This has been un unbelievable. I thank you for a, taking. Uh, oh, absolutely. Go ahead. Thank you for taking us time out of your day. I understand you're very busy. We've been trying to get this, and we finally, we finally, finally did. got it. We finally so did. So thank you so much. Thank yes. you again, Chan. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, bro, I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I won't get the handshake. You, you do. Shall we close it out how I close out all my videos? Yes. You, yes? Yes. Again, thank you so much for having me. And until the next time, honey, y'all going about y'all business and have the most amazing day. But even if you can't have a good one, don't you dare go messing up nobody else's here. <laughs> See y'all next time. Love y'all. Thank you so much, Pam. Thank Absolutely. you so much. This is amazing. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice. Hustle pay the price, want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life, look, all my life, been grinding all my life, sacrifice, hustle pay the price, want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life.